Tell me, guys, do you, do you ever do on stage interviews? Is that something that happens regularly? Or? No. <laughs> and, and why not? Well, this is a, a first Q and A. The last Q and A um, I did was at Auckland University three years ago with Mike. We've been on the road for a couple of weeks, and we're rather worse for wear. Um, so tonight is a very uh, interesting and new situation. There's a really interesting frequency going on there. But yeah, I've never actually done a question and answer session before the gig. Usually it's after the gig or in the middle of the gig. So um, it's a first. Well, that, that amazes me because, you know, I remember seeing you play 20 years ago in New Zealand where we both grew up. And I think one of the things that uh, struck both Ray and I about the music industry was it hadn't got to a place in a regular way where there was a connection with the audience at every single gig other than the music. Um, but you guys have been connected for quite some time. How did that come about? I first started working with Mike in the late 90s. I moved to London in 1995. And then, uh, myself and Mike were working um, with a producer called Phil Asher from a collective called Restless Soul. So I met uh, Mike in some of those sessions we did um, in West London. Then we went on to make uh, an album called Sound Travels. And then the follow-up uh, album to that was called Squire for Hire. Um, which incidentally went gold in New Zealand, which was, um, very, was a wonderful uh, thing for us to, uh, to see that New Zealand has embraced the music, because the thing about the music at that time, it was a very London-based thing. It was a very much a collective of the people we were working with. It was very much a London sound, so it was great to see that New Zealand has appreciated uh, that sound. Uh, bringing it up a little bit up to date, uh, Mike has also produced my last two records. The last one, was called The Million Skies, the one before that which is now currently available in the UK and Europe is called The Poets Embrace. Um, I flew Mike down to New Zealand to record uh, both of those records, even though I live in London, so to record them in, in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, and it was a wonderful new experience getting back to a quartet sort of a format. Uh, a lot of the bands I've had in the past are very big. Bands. I mean, tonight is a six piece. We have um, Vanessa Freeman on vocals, um, we have a guitarist. I decided to get back to the original quartet uh, vibe. And so, myself and Mike spent many, many years and months really studying those wonderful great jazz records from the 1960s um, and doing our own version of. So, I'll pass you on to Mike now. Well, Nathan asked me to come down and produce Poets and Brace, which we did two years ago. And uh, the remit was to make an album in the late 1950s style where you go straight to the tape and it would be the band and it would be the tape and you'd listen to it. And uh, we very much based the sound of it and the recording uh, process on Kind of Blue, which is as we know, <laughs> the pinnacle of uh, recording in jazz. And, uh, we finished out in two days, which um, was a shocking experience for both of us uh, to be 48 hours into a project and it to be done. Uh, so that was great for us to do. Uh, we worked at a fantastic studio uh, called York Street in Auckland, an amazing engineer uh, and a fantastic desk. And it was, uh, yeah, definitely a game changer for us as far as what could be done, you know, still, in terms of recording. So I guess you were recording live a lot. Um, Putting not to drum tracks or no, this was straight, literally straight to a quarter inch to uh, the original Ampex machine that Miles used on Kind of um, Blue. There was no overdubbing or mixing; it was just straight down to tape. What about the vocals? Did you record those? Well, the five vocals on the album. So um, the album we're talking about is called The Poets and Braves, which is um, I got a release here through Warner's, which is great because Warner's have been a great. Um, they able to work with in New Zealand and Australia, uh, and they picked it up for here, which is quite unusual for a quartet jazz record um, to even get a release. So there were no vocals on that one. We did a follow-up album earlier this year, um, which had vocals on it, which we did overdub. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> the thing I've learned with uh, all this analog uh, recording is it's all right 
to do whatever you need to do for the music. You need to let the music speak. So in other words, it can be recorded digitally, it can be recorded analog, it can be recorded on a computer, it can be recorded in a big studio. But I really think after going down the path of doing a very analog recording uh, as opposed to a digital recording, I think I think the music really is the thing which stands the test of time. And um, I've got over a few of my preconceptions um, about how music should be recorded or how it should sound because I think ultimately the, the story of the music is the thing that is strongest and is the strongest thing. I mean, further to that, I'd also say the thing that struck me about recording is that when you do something in the moment, is that when I listen to the Poets and Grace, you know you're in Auckland. It's got an Auckland thing about it, and that's what's great about doing music as a medium, is you can feel, if we'd have recorded it in London, it would have been a completely different album, it would have sounded differently. It would have uh, come across differently. It's about where you record, if you record in that fashion, you get like you do on a live show, you get the freedom of that time. No, no, I've been to Australia, it's very different. Um, yeah. and it's, uh, no, I mean, New Zealand is amazing, Auckland's very, it's just, it's just got a you know, vibe about it, it's very open. Everyone's relaxed, there's no, when you walk in, there's no attitude, everyone's really cool, and you just get on with the, with the thing. Whereas if you're in New York or London, or maybe it's a different thing, so when you walk in, there's a whole bunch of stuff you gotta get through before you get to the work. So that's what I really mean, it's open. You can get straight to it over there. Well, here you go. Everyone's got to do the whole line here. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a rather benign atmosphere in Auckland in in, um, in January and February. Everyone's on holiday. It's beautiful. It's like 25 degrees. Everyone's going to the beach every day. Um, so there there isn't that edge. Um, and further to what Mike said. Um, of course, I grew up in Auckland. Um, my whole, I learnt about music in Auckland. I left New Zealand in 1991, moved to New York, and then came to London in 1995. But um, who I am as a person and as a musician has a lot to do with my early life in Auckland. And in fact, my father was a jazz musician. I grew up with a lot of um, great jazz musicians. He used to back a lot of American musicians. Um, he played with uh, Matt Adderley. He played with Eartha Kitt, uh, Lee Konitz. A, a number of amazing American musicians, and my dad was the guy drafted in to play bass, so I got to experience at first hand these wonderful American musicians at a very early age in New Zealand, which opened my mind to the possibilities of basically getting out of New Zealand as soon as I could. <laughs> Even though we love it. Even though I love it. The other thing I just wanted to ask is what should we expect tonight in terms of the music we're going to play? Yes, we don't, we don't want to chit-chat too much because I know you've all come here for a show and um, we've got a wonderful band. Um, we've got Daniel Crosby on drums who was one of the original members of um, a band I put together when I first got my first regular gig in London at the Notting Hill Arts Club um, in, in the 1996-97 uh, I think it was, and then it sort of three, three and a half years there. Um, Daniel comes from a very auspicious. He's a check at the back there. There is Daniel. There is. There he is. He comes from a very auspicious line of uh, London musicians. His father is Gary Crosby, uh, who formed Jazz Jamaica. Um, Daniel's the London version of me, although he's a lot blacker. He, in terms of that, his father was a jazz bass player and wore cardigans, <laughs> and now he started to wear a cardigan. <laughs> It's Italian, apparently. But um, myself and Daniel grew up with jazz bass player fathers and also grew up with a lot of musicians and a lot of music in the house. And I think that's probably something, uh, even though we're from other sides of the world, we share that in common. So we've got Daniel on, um, on drums, on guitar. His uh, arms across the tazzy, I call it, because this is my, one of my best Australian mates, arms across the tazzy, being the Tasman Sea, which separates New Zealand from Australia. Uh, Mr. Leon Stenning, and he's been both a part of um, Squire for Hire uh, and my many uh, subsequent bands and lineups. Um, of course, we've got Mike Pato. Sort of, we share the MD duties on on, uh, on on this gig. We we definitely there's a little bit of touring and frying about material, lineup, who should be on the gig, what what we should be doing. Um, and of course, Leon's been a big part of uh, Mike's musical 
life as well. On vocals we have Vanessa Freeman, who um, has been an absolute angel um, in my life and in all of our lives. Uh, I first started working with her down at the Arts Club, the Nottingham Arts Club, which I mentioned before. And she, of course, was a big part of uh, Sound Travels and of Sky for Hire, and will be playing uh, one of my favourite tunes from that era tonight, it's called Wonderful Thing, um, and a few other things. And I've had the lovely pleasure of bringing Mike and Vanessa down to New Zealand on several occasions, and it's great to be able to hang out with them in New Zealand and show New Zealanders what we do. Um, on bass, we have Mr. Neil Charles, who's a very old spar of Mr. Daniel Crosby. Um, playing electric bass tonight. Have I mentioned everybody? Uh, myself. And uh, myself. As myself. <laughs> um, it's just great to be here at Shaka Zulu and thank you for the opportunity um, to play. If you just give us 10 minutes, just go and um, have another lovely Lawson Dry Hills. Is there any, um, is there any more questions before we? get on stage and play some music for you. I thought not. Probably, why don't you just play? It's another question. Perfect, guys. Thank you for that. And we'll see you in 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 